We'd like to call the Lancaster Central District uh, Board of Education meeting to order. In the unlikely event of an emergency, if we have to evacuate the boardroom, please note the location of the exits. At this time, I ask you to silence your cell phones and rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Please remain standing for a moment of silence uh, and self-reflection. Tonight we stand uh, for a moment of reflection to keep in mind uh, all of those uh, Americans who have been subject to the various hurricanes that we've experienced throughout the last month or so, uh, and most especially for uh, our fellow Americans and others who were the victims of a horrendous attack in Las Vegas this evening. We keep them in our thoughts and in our prayers. Thank you, everyone. Tonight we start off with 4.0 presentations. Uh, we have three different presentations tonight, and we'll start with the most exciting of them, 4.1, and I don't mean to make fun of you guys, I'm sorry. Um, our audit presentation uh, by the firm of Drescher and Malecki. Good evening, everyone. Um, our presentation will be brief. We have given a full presentation to the board. They asked us to come here and just kind of highlight some of the, uh, the financial statement items that uh, went on in the past year. So with that, uh, we can go right into what our products are. We give, we give an opinion on the basic financial statements. There's third-party users, people that buy bonds for the, for the, uh, the district, there's taxpayers. Uh, we give verification that management's uh, financial statements fairly state their position as well as the 12 months of activity. We give a management letter to the board which has been shared as well as certain auditor communications. And then there's also a report on the extra classroom activity. So with that, I'll, I'll jump right into where we ended up the past year. Our key fund is the general fund. The general fund here, you can see the blue is the good stuff, the red is not so good, the red are the expenses. We have finished uh, ahead of the red for the last couple of years. That's approximately a $4.4 .4 million excess of revenues over expenditures in the past year. You know, it, what that represents on $100 million is approximately 4%. Moving on where our fund balance is, uh, historically you can see our trend here. Uh, we've uh, been pretty stable. We've, we've grown a little bit in the last couple of years uh, into, the, into the fund balance where we have approximately $36 million in, in, the, uh, in the restrictions for fund balance that's set aside for various items like future retirement payouts, uh, OPEB payouts, future capital projects, future bus purchases. So ultimately what you're going to see is that the district is in pretty stable financial position. Final chart that we'll get to is where our unassigned fund balance is. This is the money that the board can utilize for at their discretion for items that come up. Uh, they're at about 3.9% of the annual budget. The state has a certain requirement that you stay under 4%. So again, you can see we're in a fiscally stable position. I'll summarize just with a couple of observations. Uh, I think I've used the word stable. I think I've used the, uh, the word that they, they're, they're fairly stated the position. Uh, those are all things that were evidenced during our audit. We did receive full cooperation from the audits, from the, uh, the accounting staff, from the business manager, from the superintendent's office, as well as anybody else within the district. So that concludes just the brief summary. If there's anything else that uh, you'd like us to cover or any questions from the board, I'd be happy to address them. Very good. Thank you very much, gentlemen. I think we have to act on that, though. I think we have to, it's an action item, right? Uh, as chairman of the audit committee, uh, we did meet with, obviously, with Drescher and Malecki, and we uh, agree with their, uh, their findings, and obviously, uh, you know, we'll be continuing working with them throughout the, uh, 
uh, remainder of the school year um, and, and continuing on. So um, I can I have a motion or I, I'll make the motion to uh, accept their findings at this point. Second. Any other questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Okay. So moved. Thank you, Mr. Gallagher. 4.2 is a school board recognition presentation, and that's run by Mrs. Marcinelli. Mrs. Marcinelli is making her way down. Okay. Um, we have a special presentation put on by all of our students here at, in the Lancaster schools, right from all the K-3 buildings up to um, the high school. And we're really proud of our music program in Lancaster schools. So that's a little hint of what this is going to be about. And um, if we can just have the board come on out here, because the kids will be going up here, you will not be disappointed. It is amazing. As we say in kindergarten, they're fans. <laughs> You'll love it. So we just have to bring the kids in and get them settled. This is to say thank you to the Board of Ed and Board of Education Appreciation Week. When someone asks you to listen to a song, it's because the lyrics mean everything they are trying to say. To show our appreci appreciation for all the school board does for us, we thought a song would be the best way to tell you. Each of our schools spent some time putting together a list of all the things the school board does for us. The result was a list too long for just one song. We probably could have recorded a whole album. But we managed to combine a little from each school to create this song and hope that you know how very much we appreciate the fact that we can always count on you to do what is best for each and every one of us.
Oh, before you sit down, I just want to thank you so much. <laughs> they want to get out of here and go home and play, right? It's still nice outside. Thank you so much. I love seeing all the students from all the different buildings. And that really chokes all of us up, board members. I know this is my favorite time of the year, my favorite meeting of the year. And I promise you that each and every board member is here for you. And if you need things, we are here to help you because, believe it or not, you are our bosses, right? We work for the students of Lancaster, right? So let's give them one more big round of applause. Thank you. Okay, now it's time to go. Cause you got it. You can still play outside. There's still light sunlight out there, right? Yeah. Good, eve good evening. Good evening. Um, my name is Nancy Mariani. I'm the Lancaster Art Department Chairperson. Not only do we have a phenomenal music department, as you just saw, but we also have a phenomenal art department. And uh, we have a phenomenal board that allows us, for the last four years has started, to have this great kindergarten through 12th grade art show. The artwork, which you're going to see the students holding up tonight, this artwork will be put up in the Central Avenue School boardroom through, throughout the entire year. So parents, please come and see your child's work in that boardroom. Um, all you need to do is just probably call the central office um, number and they'll let you know when that room is available for you to come in. Uh, the students are from last year. So if we start with the kindergarten young lady or gentleman, that person will actually be in first grade now. So that's how it works. So obviously our senior um, recipient of this uh, is in college now, and uh, she is not here. So it kind of works in that direction. I would also like to thank the board and our wonderful administrators here at Lancaster and all the administrators in the elementary, middle, and high school. Thank you very much, because without you, this could never happen. And thank you, community, for always supporting your children and their art. Thank you very much. Now next, I'm going to hand over the phone to uh, Mr. Uteg, and he is going to announce the um, names from kindergarten to 12th grade. And if that child could come up to receive their certificate and hold their artwork, and at the end, I will collect the artwork and put it up in the Central School. Thank you. I will get the certificates and get them to the child.
Carlson Sigarella come up if he's here. Hey Carson. Emma Bernard. Emma Bernard. Is Emma here this evening? Is Emma here this evening? <laughs> Cooper Storms. Is Cooper, Cooper here this evening? Is Cooper here this evening? Okay. Second grade. Second grade. Okay. Tyler Kibler. Tyler Kibler. Third grade. Is Tyler here this evening? Is Tyler here this evening? They're off painting murals. Off painting murals. <laughs> Megan uh, Steveline? Uh, Is Megan here this evening? Allison Lippa? Is Allison here? Oh, Ryan Corcoran. Oh, Is Ryan, Ryan Corcoran, Corcoran here? Ryan Corcoran. Ryan's here. <laughs> Paige uh, Izzard? Uh, Caitlin Petruvia. Paige Valera. <laughs> Ryan Dean. Ryan Dean. Sabrina Prinoosh. Sabrina Prinoosh. Sabrina? Sabrina here? Sabrina here. She's studying hard. She's studying hard. And Lauren Davis was our Lauren senior from last, last year. And this one from Lauren was responsible for the So just to give you an idea, to win a, an art award like this, we have thousands of students in this school, right? And everyone can submit an entry. And each of you were selected for your artistic ability, which is evident if you take a look at these pieces of art, right? So I mean, you have a talent that you should try to utilize and uh, enrich while you're here at Lancaster, and you'll always have that. So congratulations. Very well done. Let's give I them a... I don't know if I could draw a person that well. <laughs> Let's give them a, a nice warm uh, round of applause. Thank you, everyone. 
Okay, that was 4.3, the last of our presentations for tonight. Thank you again to Mrs. Mariani and all the students. Uh, 5.0 correspondence. Uh, anyone on the board receive any correspondence that they'd like to? Is something wrong? I can't see that well either. As evidenced by my request. Did anyone from the board have any correspondence? Mrs. Christopher, do you have any correspondence? Anyone? Okay, I did receive um, uh, someone came in and uh, at my place of employment, a colleague, and expressed her gratitude to uh, Mr. Krasinski and the middle school staff for a wonderful uh, orientation evening. And she was very impressed, so I consider that somewhat of a correspondence. Um, 6.0, hearing no other correspondence, we have approval of minutes. 6.1, could I have a motion to accept the regular session minutes from our September 18th meeting? So moved. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? So moved. 7.0 items from staff organizations. Uh, anyone from the Lancaster Administ Administrative and Supervisory Association? Thank you, Mrs. Adler. Thank you, Mrs. Adler. Anyone from the Lancaster Central Teachers Association? Association of Service Personnel? And anyone from the Lancaster Association of Substitute Teachers? Okay, thank you. 8.0 board reports. Anyone from the board care to report out on anything? Which glasses? Um, okay, I'll go quick. A couple things. First, um, on September 18th, I attended the Academy of Finance um, Advisory Board meeting. 
<clears throat> it was the first meeting of the year, so we um, just got some briefings of the projects that they're doing. The first one they talked about was corporate giving and the Russell's um, fundraiser that they do every year. That's going to be starting soon, just in time for the holidays. Um, I highly recommend that, by the way, if you are in need of a Russell's gift certificate, see one of the students at the Academy of Finance. Um, interesting note, those, fine, those fundraisers pay for internships for our students who don't get a paid intern. So if they do get an internship opportunity that isn't paid, those fundraisers pay them for that. And the reason we want it paid is because then they qualify for the NAFTRAC certification. And I printed out for you, if you would take one of each of these, um, this one here explains what NAF is. Um, and what it means as far as that certification. And this is the internship program um, as well. So um, that's just some side information for you about the Academy of Finance. Um, then they did, um, they have like an outreach committee as well on there. So we broke into groups and um, they, each, each member of this advisory board was given a list of people in the community to contact that has already given a student um, an internship opportunity to um, contact them to get feedback on how it, what their experience was and um, to get more opportunities for our students and invite them to the next meeting which will be held on October 17th. It's called the Bring a Friend Meeting. Um, and that's where you can, any one of us on the advisory board or anyone, period, can bring a friend to introduce them to this program to kind of spread the word. So we're trying to get these kids as many opportunities as we can. I've mentioned before that the kids have just been so great in their internship that they're being hired. So it's a double-edged sword because the kids are taking the jobs and not leaving those internships for the next class, but they're so good that they're getting jobs, which is great, but it's a, it's a problem too. So we got to find these kids some opportunities. Um, career day for them is planned for December 5th, just in case you're interested. And the next big fundraiser for them is November 3rd. It's being held at the Elks with the CKSO, our um, awesome steel drum band. And that's going to be a basket fundraiser. So that's a fun night. I think if I'm going to go, um, if any of you would like to join me, I don't have like prices of tickets or anything like that yet, but um, I'm sure it's like at the door. You can pay to get in or whatever it is. It can't be that much, but it's November 3rd at the Elks. It's a Friday night. And you can donate a basket if you'd like or just attend and try to win one. So that's um, Academy of Finance. Um, as far as NISBA goes, the leadership dinner is the, the fifth this Thursday. I will be attending that at the Millennium. Um, at our last meeting, we discussed the House of Representatives, which approved their approval of the educational funding bill, um, which would reduce the U.S. Department of Education's budget by 3.5%, which is about $2.3 billion, which is in incredibly awful. And most of that is to cut um, teacher training and class size reduction, which two huge things. Um, I don't even want to, I, I won't even go into my, uh, my opinion on it, of course, but, and then another $100 million reduction in after school aid. The reason I'm sharing this with you is because of the legislative piece, we meet with legislators and discuss our wants and needs and wishes and so on. And Brian Higgins had voted against the bill, but Chris Collins voted in favor of the bill. This is after we as a legislative team met with him and we're assured he wouldn't do that. So Mr. Collins will be getting a letter in the mail and a visit. Poor Mr. Collins. Um, 
but he assured us that he wasn't going to do that. So we as a team will be, we drafted a letter um, explaining our displeasure and letting him know that we're watching and we pay attention to the way he's voting. In the Senate, the committee um, that oversees K through 12 spending voted to increase spending by 29 million. So we were happy with that. But both the House and the Senate bills rejected the Trump administration's um, school choice proposals. So that's good. Um, the hot topic this year on the legislative team is how to prevent funds from being diverted to charter schools. So that's the one thing we're going to really be focusing on and prepping for our capital conference in February. Our next meeting is in a couple weeks, I think, when we get back from our NISBA conference. And that's, what, that's when we're going to start with that. So, Lastly, on a fun note, I did attend the Varsity Alumni, alumni Night football game. Um, the class of 1967 celebrated their 50th class reunion. Um, that was a lot of fun to see my fellow alums celebrate 50 years, the excitement and watching them run on the field. And it was, it was awesome. So congratulations to them. That's it for me. Oops. Oh, sorry. Okay, uh, really quickly, um, I wanted to thank Jamie and her team. I got to meet with Jamie um, and talk with her and her team um, about anything from technology, facilities, uh, food service management, busing, um, all the above. Um, so I wanted to, to thank uh, Jamie for that. I learned a lot, uh, much more to learn, but we spent a couple hours talking about that. Also, I wanted to thank Dr. Perini and her team um, I got to sit down for another couple of hours and talk about curriculum and instruction. Um, again, blown away on both sides just about just how well they were working together. Um, and the one thing that popped in my mind is there, there's, there's a lot of connectivity, not only horizontally but vertically, uh, when you think about sort of the curriculum going from pre-K all the way up um, to our seniors. So I wanted to, uh, to thank you guys for that. Um, if you want to see a good football team go the first quarter, it won't be a good football game because every game I've been to has been a complete blowout. So um, go see one of their games. It's absolutely incredible when you watch uh, the Legends uh, play. But again, it won't be competitive, at least every game I've seen. Um, last thing, I know we talked, um, uh, the audit committee, Kelly, myself, and Bill sat in. Um, you also saw the presentation talking about the audit. Um, we have a work session October 23rd. One of the things we talked about a few months ago was talking about the funds uh, and, and what they are, what they're tagged for, and helping uh, us understand it, but as well as uh, the folks in the community. So I think that is October 23rd. I just wanted to mention it, Pat. I don't know if you're going to mention it as well. Um, I think, again, it continues the conversation. That's something we want to talk about uh, to better inform us as well as, as the community. So thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Okay, Mr. Jackson, thank you. Mrs. Christopher, thank you. What, what Mr. Jackson was referring to when uh, the different meetings he went to is many times when you come onto the board, um, you're advised to meet with many of the uh, directors of, of curriculum or directors of our different departments and learn uh, as much as you can about how the district is run so well. Um, so I'm glad you're taking the opportunity to do that. It sounds like, of course, it was time well spent. Uh, yep, we do have the... Uh, I will mention this at the end of the meeting uh, as well, but as Mr. Jackson said, on October 23rd at 6 o'clock, uh, we have a, um, a reserve fund work session. It's one of our first budget work sessions, and that'll be at Central Avenue, uh, so that should be uh, informative as well. Um, my board reports for this evening, I um, have um, a cut, just a couple things I'd like to mention. Uh, one of our goals for this year is to try to make it to things, um, and what I had suggested and, and what we talked about was some, some of the things we normally wouldn't find ourselves at. Um, I'm a regular attendee at the uh, Lancaster High School girls volleyball uh, contest. My daughter plays on that team. Um, I did make it out um, on a beautiful day and see a little bit of the Lancaster uh, High School girls field hockey team. Uh, and that was quite exciting and I've never seen um, formally a game before. So um, a, another quality team here at Lancaster. And then of course walking th through the grounds you see it, it bustles with activity. Um, and we have a lot of work going on but there's a, a lot of uh, activities and sports. Uh, and things that are, are, are what make Lancaster great. And then lastly, as Mrs. Christopher said, she went to one of the special nights. Um, we had some board members there. I wasn't able to be at that one, um, but I was able to attend senior night, which is uh, this past weekend. Uh, and that was, uh, again, a, a very entertaining football game. Um, those boys really can play. 
Um, and we honored our seniors. Uh, we had uh, 26 seniors. I think there was three of our cheerleading squad and then one young lady who was one of the photographers uh, who was a senior. So we honored them. And that's really a nice occasion where they are able to walk onto the field and they're announced um, and they're greeted by current coaches and some former coaches. I know Coach Jankowitz was there and Coach Foyle was there. Um, that's quite an honor. And I thank them for, um, for stopping and, and saying hello to us as well. Mrs. Metz was there. Um, as well as myself. So again, a special evening and um, you know, quite a bit of entertainment can be had by, by viewing some things that go on in Lancaster. Uh, and then lastly, uh, the CKSO, um, as Ms. Mrs. Uh, Christopher had mentioned, they volunteered their time. I was out in Delaware Park yesterday for an event. Um, they volunteered their time and they put on a show um, volunteering their time and, and coming out on a beautiful day uh, to uh, benefit a very worthwhile cause. Um, and then lastly, we have an uh, open house uh, at the high school. I look forward to my daughter's um, open house. I got to get as many of these things in as I can while she's still there. And she insists that I go. And if you haven't been to one, um, um, I'm sure that many of you have, um, you'll see quite a few parents. And it feels as though you're in high school again as you're passing parents in the hallway and trying to make it to class on time. So um, I look forward to uh, open house on Thursday and learning all the wonderful things that are going on in the high school. With that, I'll hand it over to Dr. Valley for his superintendent's administrative report. Yeah, I have three quick things. Um, the, the Lions Club of Lancaster um, is now conducting free vision screenings for all pre-K, uh, kindergarten, first, and second grade students in the district. Uh, Mike Lasowski uh, contacted me. I'm also a Lancaster Lion. I see some in the audience uh, as well. Um, but uh, Mike offered this, he was excited about this new screening, um, uh, very expensive screening eye equipment. And he said, hey, listen, we've tried it in Buffalo. I said, let's, let's give it a shot. And uh, thank you to Marie Perini and the nurses for working through that. But all those uh, students are being uh, screened, and it's already produced fruit. There were students already in the school district who had uh, eye issues with their eyes uh, that have been found and are now uh, with doctors, uh, you know, getting those things remedied or, or fixed. So uh, uh, congratulations. Thanks so much for, to Marie Perini and the nurses for putting that uh, program into place. Uh, Z Space has, has arrived at a school district. Um, if you've seen Twitter or whatever, there's been uh, all kinds of pictures about Z Space at the high school and the middle school, and that's a really exciting initiative. Um, stations are currently at the hub at the high school, and students are not waiting for training, but instead they're sitting at the computers and uh, at the stations and experimenting with the program. Uh, more to come about this uh, exciting program. Uh, the Board of Education asked to actually experience the uh, Z space. So when we're over at the high school or the middle school, we're going to avail them of that opportunity, and it should be a hoot. Um, and finally, uh, something out there for all parents, uh, whether you're listening to it on, watching it on the, the website, uh, this broadcast of this board meeting, or uh, you're listening or talking to people, uh, please let people know that there's family literacy workshops uh, beginning Tuesday, August 24th. We've had these family uh, li literacy uh, workshops for years and years and years. Um, and uh, you know the workshops will consider choosing the right books, help parents choose the right books. Uh, they will uh, uh, talk about comprehension and understanding fluency, improving academic vocabulary, making words and summer reading and uh, writing tips. Um, these workshops are open to the community free of charge and are a real help to uh, parents who uh, uh, attend them. So many times I hear that you know, parents say, well, what can I do? Well, this workshop is about that. They will give you all the tools and the ideas and the strategies to help you help your own young children uh, read and, and do that. So take advantage of that. The first one, again, is October 24th. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Valley. 10.0 is old business. Anyone from the board have any old business they'd like to discuss? I do. Um, I just want to let everyone know we had discussed the student parking at the high school and I just want to give a shout out to um, Ms. Sadamak and Mr. Marchioli. Thank you. I know it took an incredible amount of work and you could have very easily said it's a lottery, there are spots, they're gone, I'm sorry, and walked away from it because September is so busy. And I really appreciate what you did. To, you went far beyond what you needed to, and you found spots for all those kids who didn't have one. So thank you. Um, I really appreciate it, and I want the community to know those kids all found spots. Everyone's taken care of. 
and it, the, the issue has been resolved. So thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else have any other old business they'd like to bring up? Okay, 11.0, new business. 11.1, .1, the personnel items. 11.1.1, uh, .1, could I have a motion to accept the personnel changes? So moved. Seven. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? So moved. 11, bless you. 11.1.2, uh, could I have a motion to accept the tenure recommendation? So moved. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? So moved. 11.2, education items. 11.2.1, .1. could I have a motion to accept the Committee on Special Education's report? Second. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? So moved. 11.2.2, .2, could I have a motion to accept the Committee on Preschool Special Education's report? So moved. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? So moved. 12.0, business and financial items. 12.1, could I have a motion to accept the financial items? So moved. Second. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? So moved. 12.2 is a first policy reading for 7240, student records, uh, access, and the challenge of those records. Uh, that will be for information only, and we'll come up at a future board meeting for action. 12.3 is a contract with Erie One BOCES uh, for a room rental. Could I have a motion to accept that contract? Second. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? So moved. 12.4 is a contract with the district and Chicktawaga Central School District. Could I have a motion to accept that contract? Second. Any questions or comments? Yeah, good idea. Um, Mrs. Your microphone wasn't on. What she said was since she's a, uh, you want to repeat it? Go ahead. Sure. I said I'm just going to simply abstain from voting simply because I am an employee of Chicktawaga Central. Just to be on the safe side, I'm just going to remove myself from the vote. Thank you, Mrs. Christopher. Uh, any other questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? So moved. 12.5, could I have a motion to accept the surplus equipment report? So moved. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? So moved. 12.6 is a bid award or second for athletic equipment, uniforms, and supplies. Could I have a motion to accept the bid award? So moved. Second. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? So moved. 12.7 is our change orders. Uh, could I have a motion to accept the change orders? So moved. If we have any questions or comments, Steve from Young and Wright is here. If anyone from the board has any questions, anyone? Thanks for coming, Steve. Okay. All those in favor of the change orders? Aye. Those opposed? So moved. And then 12.8, we have a contract between the district and Mary Ruth Morris. Could I have a motion to accept that contract? So moved. Second. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? So moved. 13.0 public hearing. Um, welcome to all who have come to observe this meeting this evening. This is a time set aside for public hearing, a time when we invite members of the community to share ideas and concerns with us. We welcome this opportunity to hear from you. Each person is given up to five minutes in which to address the board. This is a meeting held in public rather than a public meeting, which means we will be not, not be engaging in the dialogue with members of the community this evening. Rest assured we are listening carefully and we take seriously what you have to say. I would like to, take, uh, to ask you that you demonstrate respect for us and for one another by speaking to the issues, giving us ideas, and sharing your opinions, but not engaging in any personal attack. Uh, this policy will be strictly enforced, and anyone violating the policy will be barred from addressing the board in the future. Thank you for your cooperation. Um, we have two people signed up for this evening. Um, first, we have Ms. Angela Ford. Is Ms. Ford here? Hi, good evening. Thank you very much for taking the time to let me share my thoughts and ideas um, about some issues that I'm having. And um, basically, I can start by saying last year in the 2016-2017 school year, we moved to the Lancaster District. I was really excited. I know it's a great place to be. And, you know, with that, you know, there were some changes and there were some issues. Um, my son got signed up for an IEP. He has some learning disabilities. 
And so moving on, you know, we settled in in the first school year and everything went real well. So this year, um, I was refused busing for Michael where he goes. Now, last year he was able to go to the Boys and Girls Club. Uh, there were other issues. I know there's other programs out there. This is not something I can afford, nor is it something that um, I would care to do. I was unhappy with some of those programs. So that was not something that I visited last year, knowing that this all worked out well and I was provided busing last year in that school year from Sholey, the same school, for the same student to the same building. And now this year I've been told that this is just not part of the district and this is not allowed. And so I, you know, there's a few things I'd like to say about that. Seeing that you did it last year, all year, without hesitation or question or issue, there was no, none. I mean, it went on from the time we started school throughout the whole school year. And basically when, you know, this year I was taken by that and of course pretty floored to know that it's the same school, the same child, the same building, and now you can't do that. Okay, so this has put numerous, you know, uh, issues on my personal life, you know, just on, on Michael's life that he can't, you know, get to where he's going and he doesn't understand what's going on. Right now I'm leaving work in Buffalo at 3 p.m. I'm picking Michael up at 3.15. I'm dropping him off two minutes down the road at the Boys and Girls Club and I'm driving back to Buffalo for my last hour of work. Okay, so this has obviously put a damper on things. I, I don't have any other access. I've exhausted other resources and other options that I thought that I could pursue. None of this has worked out for me, pending that I'm now standing here asking you. Uh, you know, I'm aware that there's a, a development, as I talked to the superintendent, uh, that you have some students going to Sholey that are on the other side of Lancaster. So I guess my question would be, why can't Michael be part of that bus? And I know that it maybe doesn't go right by. I don't know. Maybe it does. I've been told both. I have no proof for that. But my question is, you did it all year last year. And now, you know, when approaching the bus garage, they told me, well, we made an exception. And we made a mistake. And we weren't supposed to do that. Okay, fine. But you had all school year to, you know, to notify me last year or at the end of the school year. Hey, you know, we did this as a courtesy. We went ahead and, you know, we made a mistake. So just so you understand, this, you know, this isn't going to happen again. I guess if I was notified last year, anytime, December, January, March, I don't care when, I probably wouldn't be here and I would have made other arrangements. Now we've started a new school year and you know, there's, there's issues because Michael has a learning disability that I'm not sure what places. I know there are some places that will not take children with disabilities. And so he did so good at the Boys and Girls Club yesterday. They have been absolutely phenomenal as far as what these other programs did to me, for me and for my kids compared to what they do. So I guess I'm asking that you would reconsider letting him be part of whatever bus, and I know that there's issues because you're short bus drivers and you don't think this is in the district of Sholey, but you did it last year, all year. And I can't imagine, I know there's other people who have pursued this and have backed off because they've been told no. I guess me, I'm different because you did it all year last year for me. You didn't say anything all year. Not until after this year's school, school year started was I notified that, no, that, that's not going to work. Now, why would I think anything would be any different the next school year? Same kids, same school, same place. So to me, this is absolutely you know, unfair. I guess I would say all these other schools, there's other K through three schools that you say are closer to the Boys and Girls Club, that you would take them. To me, this is completely unfair. You've got, you know, I don't know how many K through three schools you have, but there's some that can go and some that cannot. I don't know how it was for them last year, but I know how it was for me. And so now we had bought a house and we could afford this because there's reasonable pricing, you know, to take the kids to the Boys and Girls Club. They're well taken care of. And now I'm, I'm at a loss. So, you know, I've rearranged my personal schedule all this time since school started. And I could, okay, this has worked so far. That's not gonna work when it snows outside. I can't get back and forth fast enough. So I'm being put in a position where you're not giving me any options. You're not even willing to pursue any other options or talk about it. I've basically been told you have rules and this is it and we're sorry we did it last year and we're not doing it this year, but no. So I guess I would ask, you know, that you would take the time to consider the fact that I'm just asking you to do something you've already done. This is nothing new, this is nothing different. And so I'm not sure why you're, you can say that you're not going to do it. Um, okay. Well, Mrs. Ford, I, I, I appreciate your, um, your sharing your thoughts with us. 
Um, it is at the five minute mark, so I think we, 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 we gather the story. What, we're, what I'm going to ask Mr. Uh, Dr. Valley to do is inform us on the situation, um, and then we'll follow up with you. Would that You'll be okay? follow up with me? Sure. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you very much for your time and for listening. You're welcome. Next, uh, we have Mrs. Mary Kless. <coughs> Chris, Chris, can you check with us when they talk so we can tell you whether we can hear them or not? Thank you. Okay. Um, can you hear me? Okay. Um, I don't have any complaints. I have some questions. I attended um, a Redskin reunion. Uh, at Repas, and uh, we were all seniors, obviously. So, <laughs> took this opportunity to throw the race, the senior card. You know, they have race cards and everything else. So I'm throwing my senior card, and I just wanted to ask some questions uh, regarding um, first uh, these people were asked. We're all talking about like curriculum, and one of the things the that was really predominant in our conversation was uh, cursive. They all agreed that the students should have, should uh, do more, uh, use, have cursive. You know, it should be stressed more because realistically, when you think of it, the students now, everything is fine, texting and everything's fine, but when they their grandparents are dead and gone, or their parents, or somebody's gone. Uh, they're not going to open a drawer and pull out a text. They're not going to pull out a, you know, the, the technology of handwriting is there all the time, and it's always available. But the other thing is, that is a personal thing. Somebody writes, it's personal. And they wondered why, you know, if, if they could stress cursive more in the curriculum. And also for the um, education, for the children too, it's like programming their brain. When they write, you write every time you're programming your brain and that's staying there. But uh, the most important thing they, they were stressing was letters. Like the, the students now, if they want to read like the Constitution or they want to read the old, read books and stuff, they can't understand it. They, they don't even like to write their own name. But it's, it's, it takes time, of course, but it's worth it because you, you have to think to put it in writing. But that was our, our comment on that. But I also wanted to address, um, in 2015, <laughs> I was really shocked when I got home because I came to a board meeting and it was November, 5th, November 9th, I believe, 2015. And uh, on the agenda was you were going to vote on the the gender identity, the bathrooms, and that opened a can of worms. The, luckily, the next they had to table that issue in 2015, and in all of 2016, I kept waiting for more information on that, you know, on the policy, on the gender identity. And now this year, there's more worms coming out of the can with these gender things. And I wanted to know just, just to, what's the status of that policy on the gender identity, the bathrooms and all that stuff, and specific issues on this gender, uh, these gender items. And then uh, one more thing, and I'll let you guys go. Um, in the news, it's been about these, I mean, it's terrible what happened in Puerto Rico and all these, um, and these refugees from uh, other countries, now they want to have, bring uh, Puerto Rican students, they're bringing them into Buffalo. And are we, is Lancaster going to be involved in a program like that? And also, uh, President Obama did something with the, uh, the refugee resettlement. Are we going to have any students resettling here in Lancaster? And if so, how many? And uh, one last thing, former board member Rick Foley brought up 
um, a couple of these meetings, the agenda itself, the public speaking is always at the end. And he suggested on numerous occasions that we have the public input at the beginning of the meeting. I mean, it's, it's more important for the, the people that are here to give their opinions so you people during the meeting, you can discuss what we, you know, and study what we brought up here rather than at the end of the meeting. Like now, this is the end of the meeting. What, what's going to be done about this, what this lady talked about? You know, and what I'm talking about, I mean, these are just issues that people would like to see at the beginning of the meeting and instead of sitting, because sometimes these meetings go on long and long. And we, real, I, this is your, position, you're, you're elected to this position, you have to sit here, but we'd like to know what's going on, but not have to sit through a whole meeting and then just maybe sometimes not even have the chance to voice our opinions. So that was, if you reconsider the, the agenda, uh, the, the location of the public, uh, uh, people, people uh, the public speaking at the beginning of the meeting. Okay. Than Thank you, Mrs. Quest. Thank you for sharing those those items. We'll take them under advisement. We'll, we'll get, someone will get back to you. Thank you very much. Uh, Fourteen point oh, future presentations on November sixth uh, at our next meeting. We'll have a ten-year presentation. One other reminder: we do have a uh, a work session on October twenty-third at six p.m. That's a Monday, right? Monday, October 23rd at 6 p.m. at Central Avenue, having to do with our budget. Uh, let's see, 14.0. Um, we are going to move into executive session to discuss potential litigation and to meet with the district's attorney. Uh, so at this time, could I have a motion to go into executive session? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? So moved. So effectively, the meeting will be over. We'll reconvene to adjourn, but. Um, I thank everyone for coming this evening. Thank you very much.